the first station, Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus is condemned by the representative of Roman power. It seems Pilate wanted to free Jesus, yet he bows to what could be a sense of self-preservation. In the end, Jesus is just another problem, part of a perplexing situation. How many innocent people are condemned by harsh structures so that poverty, illness and violence become their lot? Perhaps the most terrible judgment of all could be that of indifference. The call to each of us is to be sensitive, to value people. Lord Jesus, help us to be sensitive in the face of need. We are all brothers and sisters, and yet we can so easily exclude those who have no voice, no position, no power. Help us to discern well, judge wisely, and value each human being as special to God and made in his image and likeness. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. The second station, Jesus receives his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The broken, bruised back of Jesus was forced to bear the weight of the cross. We all carry our burdens, our worries, and our heavy responsibilities. Illness, misunderstandings, and pressures of work can be crushing. However, sometimes we lay burdens on others with our excessive expectations of them. Again, we do it when we refuse to take responsibility or just load the blame on others. Let us be more sensitive in the way we deal with each other. As so often, my neighbour, my colleague, has unspoken needs or struggles with issues causing pressures in their lives. Lord Jesus, when you were still hurting from the soldier's blows, you are forced to bear the weight of the rough wooden cross. Help us to learn to be more aware of those who carry heavy burdens. And may we never add to the suffering of others by our insensitivity. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. The third station, Jesus falls for the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Weakened by his ordeal, Jesus finds his legs giving way under him, and he crashes to the ground. Powerless in the grip of the system, Jesus is crushed by the weight of the violence he is enduring. Lying in the gutter, Jesus is like so many victims of violence and mugging, an object rather than a person, another statistic of crime. Sometimes we collapse because of our own low self-esteem. A sense of failure causes us to come to a full stop. Driving ourselves, being driven, we reach a point of collapse. Jesus, you saved us. You healed our brokenness when you were at your most helpless. When vulnerability had taken you over, we often struggle to do what we believe is God's will and can be dismissed or misunderstood. Help us to keep faith and to keep trying even in the face of what can feel like hopeless odds. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. The fourth station. Jesus meets his mother Mary on the road to Calvary. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, 
because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Mary and Jesus had a relationship of freedom and trust. She accompanied Jesus during his ministry and pondered on his words. Jesus in turn admired her faith and her commitment. In this moment they meet, Jesus faithful to his Father's will, and Mary keeping faith in her Son at a time of personal turmoil. The relationship between parents and children is often complex and constantly changing. Creative freedom is a necessary element in such relationships as it fosters the possibility of life-enhancing friendship. Lord Jesus, help us to grow in understanding of one another. May we have a listening heart that allows us time to reflect and to come to decisions that respect each other's uniqueness. May we give each other freedom, never presuming to control, but rather to marvel at the wonders God's grace can work within us. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent of my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. The fifth station, Simon of Cyrene helps Jesus to carry his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We can either be a guilty bystander or we can get involved. Involvement is, however, easier said than done, and we don't know what we're letting ourselves in for. Simon of Cyrene was a bystander who was propelled into the drama against his will. He must have felt afraid, even terrified, at the capricious nature of events that was beyond his control. Whatever his feelings, Simon is part of history, remembered as a helper, and along with his family, Alexander and Rufus mentioned in St. Mark's Gospel, they were part of the early Christian community. Let's remember that all of us are in danger of becoming heroes and God can surprise us with his call. Lord Jesus, help me to risk rather than always count the cost. While out of shyness I might avoid the limelight, may I also have the courage to recognise that my contribution can make a difference because you need me and that your presence is real within me. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent of my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. The Sixth Station Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. It's all too easy to get tired of doing good, of undervaluing gentle gestures. Veronica wiping Jesus' face gave him respite from one aspect of his suffering, even if it was only for a brief moment. What Jesus must have valued was the courage and compassion that moved this woman to comfort him when he was drowning in a sea of violence. She stands for humanity, in an, in an inhumane situation. The name Veronica means true image, and Jesus in his suffering face is the real image of how much God loves us. Lord, we often allow ourselves to be ruled by our thoughts about what will people think of us. Give us the wisdom to get on with our lives and to risk doing what is heartfelt and sensitive to the needs of others. May we never undervalue the way you can move us to be something of your compassion and care for others. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent of my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. 
The seventh station, Jesus falls for the second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Failure, being written off, is often the way we can be described or treated. In societies where people are treated like objects, they are often discarded because they've had their use and it's time to find a fresh face. Relationships can break up because of restlessness. Redundancies are made to help get a, bottom line, a better bottom line in the business. What does it feel like if time and time again we're discarded and people walk away from us? It is not easy to pick yourself up again and try to keep going. Our God in Jesus has been despised and rejected and yet can in the most real sense be alongside us when everything seems to be crashing around us. Lord, in dark moments, in time where there seems to be no light, give me the strength to believe and to hope for a future that will not feel like a return of the past. May I know you love me as I am and that you are my brother, my friend, Jesus, my Lord. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. The Eighth Station, Jesus Comforts the Women of Jerusalem. Not a stone left on a stone. This describes the horror and destruction of modern war. In the first century, in 70 AD, about 40 years after the Passion and Resurrection of Jesus, the Romans raised Jerusalem to the ground, a template for violence. Jesus in his sufferings knows that the people symbolised by the women of Jerusalem will suffer and die as long as we hinder the coming of God's kingdom. God's power and his fullness is shown in loving mercy and in a peace based on a justice that is founded on truth. How long, Lord, will we hold on to narrow ways and while claiming we can see, have no vision? Lord Jesus, your word tells us to care for the vulnerable and be generous to the least of our brothers and sisters. Help us to break out of the spiral of violence and to use our energies to bring your creation to its fulfilment. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent of my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always and then do with me what you will. The Ninth Station Jesus falls for a third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. People do not always wear their sufferings like a badge, but the agony, the anxiety, is then just below the surface. Many people, young and old, struggle with addictions, often without help or sympathy. Sometimes it's possible to find a place of freedom, but then events cause whatever healing has happened to be ruptured, and the new situation seems worse than before. Domestic violence is another hidden source of suffering. The victim often trapped by the abusive relationship and stripped of any sense of self-worth. Jesus, though exhausted and broken, near to the end of his journey, is always with us on our journey and never ceases to love us as we are. Loving God, help us to listen sensitively to those we love and work with. 
May we never take each other for granted, nor may we inflict pain through carelessness or being self-absorbed. Give us courage to take the first step in any work of reconciliation. May our hands be always open in friendship. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. The tenth station, Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus is both the man from Nazareth and the eternal word. He emptied himself of his glory and shared our human condition. However, his loving presence was, in the end, treated with deliberate violence. Just before his death, Jesus is stripped of his clothes, left naked, bruised and bleeding. All too often we strip people of their dignity and leave them helpless. We must try and remember that each human being is made in the image and likeness of God. And the test is, do we claim to love the God we cannot see, and then fail to see God in our sister and brother? Loving God, help us to treat each other with tenderness. Let us never be careless in our dealings with one another. We ask you that in our haste, or our efficiency, that we may not overlook the needs of those who have become voiceless. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent of my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. The eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Society condones conventions and violence is often institutionalised. The good of the state in theatres of war often comes first. Cruelty and a loss of respect for life provide an arena for callous behaviour. So often the torturer's excuse is that he or she is only doing out, carrying out their orders. The Carmelite saint Titus Bransma died after cruel medical experiments in the prison hospital of Dachau. Titus was able to talk to the nurse who was killing him, and he sowed a seed of love that led later to her conversion. Jesus on the cross helped the thief to find the way into paradise. Dying is a mysterious end to our life on earth. Can we help those ending their journey to know love rather than loneliness. Lord, forgive the times when our indifference, wounds and carelessness becomes a, headless, a heedless blow. Teach us to care and above all to support with tender presence those who are coming to the moment of truth, their Passover into eternal life. I love you, Jesus my love above all things. I repent of my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. The Twelfth Station. Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Television makes us an armchair spectator of so much death and violence. We can lose our sense of compassion and outrage as a reaction to the challenge of coping with too much reality. Pope John Paul II said, war should no longer be on the agenda of humanity. And yet violence seems to be too often the vocabulary of groups and nations. 
Jesus came to show us the way to the Father, and his commitment to the Father's will brought him to the cross. Those who had power in his day were threatened by the radical nature of his message, which was so free and inclusive. Jesus gave himself into the hands of the powerful to show his unwavering commitment to love and truth. But dying he destroyed our death, and his sacrifice, his self-giving, was truly the healing that will bring wholeness to our world. Lord Jesus, your death shows how reckless God is on our behalf. May we thank you by living and working to build a society that proclaims life and takes men and women into the light of love. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. The thirteenth station, the body of Jesus, is taken down from the cross. The death of a child is always a cause of immense grief to parents. So often, violence or an accident can cut life short. Again, cancer can be a cruel thing to a young life or any life. Mary holding Jesus in her arms is a symbol of a grieving parent. And that grief is wonderfully portrayed in Michelangelo's Pietà. Mary had, like all other mothers, to trust in God at her moment of grief. She only had faith to sustain her. This was the time when her yes to the angel at Nazareth was put to the test. Lord, help us in the face of unexpected death. Give us the strength to face into the mystery and then may our journey through grief come to a place of hope. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will. The fourteenth station. The body of Jesus is laid to rest in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Atrocities around the world have led to innocent people meeting savage deaths and then being even denied any decent burial. Too often in the aftermath of warfare and upheavals, mass graves are found telling their terrible tale. Despite the dangers, courageous, courageous men and women ensured that Jesus' body was allowed a dignified burial. The women who had kept faith were there to bring their humanity, willing to remember Jesus. Many of the disciples, apart from St. John, many of them who had been close to him, were elsewhere prisoners of fear. Lord Jesus, help us to respect the dignity of all people. May we never allow fear or prejudice to draw us into violence or into unthinking actions. We pray for that courage displayed by the faithful women of Calvary. But we pray conscious of our fragility and our fears. I love you, Jesus, my love above all things. I repent with my whole heart for having offended you. Never permit me to be separated from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me what you will.